yo what's going on ladies and gentlemen welcome to the channel this is the rth podcast man i'm your host nephew and i'm checking in man so the return of jared heard bruh i've already covered the story of his return i didn't think it was going to be this quickly though um i thought it would take a couple of months for him to get uh a fight on the line but he have one bro and it's going uh down this saturday on the undercard of brandon figueroa versus mark maxeo which will be another fight that i will cover excuse me it probably coming up next or maybe the video after my next video but uh, yeah saying that to say man jerry heard is no longer in the middleweight division has moved up to the super middleweight division um so this is one of those fights to see if he has what it take in that division to do something special bro at least get back into title contention um seeing as though he kind of uh is coming off of an l although it's been a little while last time um jerry heard was in the ring it was about 2021 and i think it was like march march or april of uh 2021 so uh just want to be accurate before i say that uh, his last fight was i think it was april yeah april Oh, it was June, uh, June of 2021. So it's been a little while, bro, since he's been in the ring. And he's dealing with, in my opinion, the ring rust of just having a long layoff. And uh, he's stepping into the ring with a guy who's pretty tough, bro, pretty fast. Um, has the ability to be a Mexican-style brawler, but also has the ability to box, man. So uh, this ain't no pushover fight, although um, Armando Resendez is at 13 and one. He has nine KOs out of those 13 fights, well, 14 fights. And he has uh, the highest possibility in this particular showdown to get the knockout at 64%. And uh, of course, Jerry Hurd is at 61 and a half percent, or you can say rounding it up to 62%. So either way I go, uh, Armando Resendez technically is the guy to more than likely catch this W in this fight unless Jared Hurd can do something special. I see this being either one or two way kind of fight. Um, Jose could depend on his boxing ability to stay on the outside and stay away from Jared Hurd, um, letting go of those counter punches like uh, Lewis did to Jared Hurd and catching a split decision win or even a unanimous decision win depending on how good his boxing ability is on the night but this can also go the other way man and that other way would be a brawl fam and i think that's what jerry Hurd be looking for when he get into the ring bro you're looking for a brawl dog you got to out tub jerry Hurd, bro and you got to have enough power to get him out of the because if you don't bro he gonna close that gap and uh yeah you see it once he closed that gap bro yeah man so uh it's one of those fights for me i don't think that jerry Hurd is significantly fast i just don't i just don't see the speed there but you know he has very fast closing speed when it comes to letting go of that right hook and letting go of that left hook off the counter punch which is crazy because like i said his initial oh i like it straight too um his jabs in the straights but it don't seem like his fist is moving fast. He don't seem like he move fast at all. Like he just one moderate pace kind of fighter. But bro, when he closed that that closing speed, bro, it's crazy, bro. And it comes with power. So he's one of those guys you gotta out muscle him in the ring. It's not gonna be one of those situations where you're just gonna be able to go in there and just move around, move around, move around. I mean, it could be. Uh, he ain't no punching bag, but it could be if you got fast enough fist and you can get off your punches in time. I see you being able to uh, outbox Jared Hurd, but I don't think that Resendez want to do that really because uh, he liked the bra, you know, um, and box. So, you know, it, that, I think that's just in the DNA code of Mexican fighters anyway. They want to be in the middle, bro. They want to be in the mid of the pack, right in the center of the ring and just swinging their fist until somebody fall down. You see what I'm saying? So it's one of those situations for me. Um, the only thing I can take negative about Armando Resendez's uh, abilities is I think he has a questionable chin. That is the real uh, deal, in my opinion, when it comes to Jose Resendez's ability to box, bro. Um, he got a questionable chin, and when he get clipped, bro, he flies back, bro. It's not like, excuse me, it's not like he get hit with something significant and he can kind of play it off. 
Nah, bro. Right, right when he get hit with something significantly hard, bro, he flies back, bro, which will give Jet Hurt all of the uh, the uh, momentum he need to go in for the KO. Although, it, he could get it. I was going to say, I, I was really going to say, I don't think he will get it. But he could get it, bro. Um, like I say, because he's going to want to brawl. And, and if Armando wants to meet him center stage and just, and just swing his fist, it might be a bad idea, bro. Uh, he he's at a, a height disadvantage and at a reach di disadvantage, and he's also at a uh, a resume disadvantage because you know Jared Hurd has seen a lot of great fighters in his career. So I don't know, bro. The experience probably come into play in this one, or maybe it doesn't, bro. Maybe it's just time for a new star to step into this rank. But in the 168 division, man, Jared Hurd can fight anybody. And get right back into the ranks if he were to lose this one. Same thing for Jose Resendez. I just think he like too small, bro. He like he 168 pounds, but he's small, bro. He a small 168. Like I'd rather see him in like um 147, maybe 156. But uh maybe that division, well 156 will probably be a little bit too big for him. But uh yeah, 147 probably be perfect for Jose Resendez. So I don't know, bro. This is one of those fights. I wanna know who y'all got on this one. Do y'all see uh Jared Hurd coming back into the ranks and you know at least starting to uh get those eyes back on him, bro. I watched his last fight versus uh Lewis, uh I want to say his last name correctly. Uh Lewis Arreyes. That was his last name. Uh Lewis Arreyes. And I watched as people was walking out of that fight, bro. So, you know, after his L in uh, his hometown, it seemed like the, the, the interest in his fights has went down uh, tremendously, which it sucks because it's kind of like, oh, when you win and we on the bandwagon and then when you lose and it's like, screw you. So uh, I hope that he could, you know, at least notch uh, this dub under his belt to get back into the contention, bro. But if Jose does it, it's, it's the same thing. You know, uh, Jose does need to get back into contention as well. He was looking like a monster until he ran up into, um, just want to be accurate again, until he ran up against, um, get these numbers in, bro. Uh, so he ran up against Marcos Hernandez, which was a fight I seen also. He was just getting clipped. In that fight, bro, he was just getting clipped with very big punches, and uh, he got clipped really early. I want to say it was like the second round where he went down, and he was playing catch up the rest of the night. Um, it was just being outpowered in that aspect, and that's what I'm thinking about this fight because um, I don't think that uh, Hernandez had half of the amount of power that uh, Jared Heard could possibly hit him with at 168, being a little bit bigger, but he should be a little bit slower which should play right into Jose Resendez's hands, not to mention the ring rust of over a year and a quarter, uh, a year and a half, actually, um, where Jerry Hurd hasn't had any ring fights since then, and then he's also coming off of a L. You see what I'm saying? So, I don't know, bro. This is one of those fights, and it's going to be on a great undercard. So, this gives Jerry Hurd an opportunity to get back into contention. It also gives Jose Resendez an opportunity to beat a household name. Be the household brand and uh, build his own brand off of beating a guy like Jared Hurd. I just wonder where it's going to be held at. Is it going to be in the mid range? Is it going to be in the phone booth? Or is it going to be um, box, box, move around, box, box, move around, box, box, move around for Jose Resendez? I don't see that being Jared Hurd's game plan. It could be. It could be, bro. But I just don't see it being his game plan. I think he's trying to get into contention versus guys like. Uh, Dimitri Andre, Dave Benavidez, um, Kato Plant, to say the least, are some of those top guys at 168. Everybody looking for a uh, championship gold in that division. And we all know that Canelo Alvarez held all that gold. And uh, he had to put it up against uh, John Ryder in Mexico in order for that to go down. And see if he will hold that belt when he see uh, Dimitri Bivol again. But uh, this is the RTH Podcast. I'm your host, Nephew. And I'm signing out. Y'all take it easy, bruh. Peace. Yo, I check the comment section of my videos all the time. And a lot of you guys have some great comments and should have YouTube channels of your own. So if that's what you're thinking about and you just don't know where to start, you probably should start by using TubeBuddy, man. It'll help you come up with great tags, titles, 
and give you a look on your competition. Basically, you have all the tools that you need to become a YouTuber, and it'll help you get ranked on the algorithm. It's free to start, and it comes with different payment tiers, which makes it suitable for your wallet. To get a 20% discount on your first purchase, click the link in the description. Try too, buddy, bro, and tell them that the RTH podcast sent you.